We're going to go ahead and get started this morning with Kevin Harvick, and we are going to go ahead and start straight in the questions, and we'll start with Jenna Fryer. Go ahead with your question, Jenna. Wow, I'm, I'm early. Good morning, Kevin, um, or afternoon, whatever it is. Um, you you raced at Darlington. Uh, you won Darlington with no fans. You've talked before about the atmosphere and how weird it is. NASCAR is not going to open the infield or, or add more access until there's a vaccine or different restrictions. How much does that change the feel of races um, with or without fans? That They just aren't the same events that, that NASCAR races are typically known to be. Yeah, well, you know, I think everything has changed, and I think our events are probably, um, you know, better than than what most people can possibly imagine at this point. So, you know, I think you have to be careful in, in how you how you phrase that and, and how you put that, because in today's world, our events are, you know, pretty pretty good compared to what you see in in other sports. So, you know, our events are are starting to have fans migrate back into the grandstands and different portions of the racetrack from a camping perspective and you know I think as as you look at what we do um, you know we're in a very very fortunate spot to be able to go back to the racetrack and and work and do the things that um, you know that that we love to do on a weekly basis so it, our environment is is um, you know for for what we've been used to at home and the things we can and can't go do and, and being able to go to a sporting event safely is, is pretty extraordinary at this point. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Our next question will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead with your question, Bob. Yeah, Kevin, um, I'm curious if you're taking any, even any extra precautions as far as trying not to get COVID considering the impact it could have on, you know, a playoff run. And if you feel drivers, I mean, will a driver even go get tested unless they're, uh, having severe symptoms. Well, Bob, it's it's changed my whole life, um, my family's whole life, and in, in the way that that uh, we do things. I travel by myself. Um, I drive in a rental car by myself. I go to the, you know, I go to the motorhome by myself. I get back, <laughs> back in the rental car, and I I go home. Uh, we don't go to the grocery store. We don't go to, um, you know, really any any social events uh, anywhere. So, you know, my, my son doesn't go to school. He's now homeschooled. So there's, there's really nothing that this whole situation hasn't changed in our family's life in order to try to create the safest environment uh, that, that we can possibly create, um, you know, in our own little bubble, I guess you could say. So it's been, uh, it's touched pretty much every portion of our life uh, trying to create that environment. Um, to be as, as safe as possible and, and do the things that, that we've done and learned throughout the year. Um, you know, I think the protocols and things that, that NASCAR has put in place for us at the racetrack, you know, some may think it's uh, excessive or over the top. But, um, you know, I think when, when you look at, you know, the situation that we're in and, and trying to get back to work, trying to keep working, trying to, um, you know, trying to um, – go by every state's and every state's uh, guidelines and county guidelines and, and, you know, make everybody happy. It has to be extreme. So, you know, I, I'm on, I'm on the side of the fence that, that, um, you know, I would rather be overly cautious in, in trying to make sure that we do the things that are required uh, to keep racing. And, and, you know, I like going to work and I like doing the things that I get to do on Sunday. And, and, you know, we're trying to, to do our part in making sure that we, follow those uh, procedures and guidelines. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Jason Brown. Go ahead with your question, Jason. Thank you, Matt. And Kevin, thank you for your time today and congratulations on just what's been a terrific season so far. Your teammate, Clint Boyer, talked about momentum and that's a real thing in the playoffs. Obviously, you and Denny Hamlin certainly have had the most momentum coming into the postseason. i just curious your uh, take, your opinion on how – how important it is to still build momentum in these playoffs? Uh, you're not going to start that now. You know, we, 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 um, we, we've tried to, um, four or five years ago, we sat down as a team and, and really, you know, tried to figure out how we could playoff race every week. It, it can't be, there's no, there's no switching gears um, from, that, from that mindset into a different mindset. You know, um, you know, that, that there's going to be teams that bring, I got a uh, a 
curious eight-year-old that wants to know what's going on. Um, but, you know, I, I think for, for us, it really that is as far as is how to race in, in playoff form on a week-to-week -week basis um, and do that as a team at, at that level. And, and I think that's, you know, for us has worked very well uh, because when we get to the playoffs, it's not, you know, how do we switch gears into playoff mode? It's, you know, keep doing what you've been doing at that level in order to continue that uh, going forward. So um, momentum comes, you know, in, in different waves. Obviously, you know, we've been fortunate to have great momentum throughout the year and, you know, have been able to capitalize on the weeks when, when we've had great race cars and, and the weeks that we haven't, we've made, you know, great finishes or decent finishes out of, out of what we've had. So, you know, I think um, momentum is real, but it comes and goes. And, and, but starting the playoffs can't be, you know, is, is not, our theory is, is not that you change gears and, and try to do something different. It's you better be ready and have already been in that mode. Our next question will come from Jeff Gluck. Go ahead with your question, Jeff. Hi, Kevin. I'm wondering if uh, you think there's a dark horse or a surprise team uh, that could make a run in these playoffs. Um, there always will be. I, you know, I think as, as you look at the competition level and, you know, I think this year could be a little bit different just because of the fact of, you know, I don't think manufacturing can keep up with engineering with the way that the, the shops have to work. And I think a lot of the planning – especially for guys that felt like they were going to be, um, you know, in the playoffs. You know, I think that, you know, waiting on the cars and things that, that might cycle around for the playoffs uh, will be different just because of, of, of the way that we've had to work. So, you know, I think it's, it's up in the air, obviously. You know, everyone's waiting on Kyle Busch to, to knock down that wall. Uh, we all know that he can, he can win on any given week and, and – know that uh, he's had a lot of bad luck this year so I think you know it, it but it could be it really it really could be anybody that that goes on that type of run with with the situation that we're in thank you our next question is going to come from Kelly Crandall go ahead with the question Kelly thank you hi Kevin given what 2020 has been with the pandemic the restrictions that you guys race under team rosters no practice no qualifying every variable that's been thrown a team play this year what is a championship in 2020 going to mean to a team just given how they've had to get there and the challenges they've had to basically overcome to get there? Yeah, you know, I think obviously, you know, for, for us, um, and, I, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, uh, we're week to week on, on trying to be competitive week in and week out. It would be great to win the championship. Um, you know, it's, it's, but it's hard to put together that, that one week and let alone 10 weeks of, of the playoffs in order to just get yourself there. So um, our, our biggest focus is, is trying to be competitive week in and week out win races, which, which we've done uh, over the first 26 weeks. And, and that's, that's our goal to continue forward and, and do those things. Um, so, you know, to, to have it all come together like it has uh, says a lot already about our organization and the things that we've been able to accomplish in, in, in extreme circumstances. So, you know, winning a championship in, in this particular year would say a lot about the people. Uh, but, but being able to be competitive week in and week out and win races, um, you know, says a lot about the people already. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Thank you. Kevin, can you um, just kind of explain the challenge in maximizing rolling time on pit road um, and, and avoiding uh, pit road speeding penalty, or is it something that's a rudimentary skill because of the, the light system? I, 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 to me, it seemed, it seemed like that there's still a skill set that maybe is hidden from most fans. Am I wrong on that? You know, I, yeah, I think for us, it's, it's a lot of communication. Um, you know, our engineers have a, have a lot to do with that in the way that pit road is shaped, um, you know, where your pit stalls are picked. To the, there's a, so there's a strategy behind everything, you know, and I think as, as you look at the things that we do on pit road, it's, it's just, it's really uh, the shape of the pit road, uh, the strategy of the, you know, the location of the pit stall and, you know, making sure that, that um, you know, my gauges and things are, are set up to, the way that I like them and, and something that, that works for, for me and our team uh, to be able to, to maximize that. So it's, it's just like anything else. You want to maximize 
uh, everything that you do on pit road, but there's, there's a lot of little details that, that go into to making that happen. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Mark Garrow. Go ahead with the question. Kevin, I was just wondering your thoughts on back-to-back -back short track races here in the opening round of the playoff and what kind of cutoff race you think Bristol will turn out to be? Um, you know, look, here, here's the thing. You know, I think as, as we've gone through uh, the playoffs in, in the past, any of these races can turn into a wild, crazy um, race that, that is, is the race that, that you all dread, um, and, and any of them can do that. So I think as, as you look at the, you know, the, the first round, uh, this year has, has obviously, um, you know, been very different all, already, but I think when you look at the schedule and, and the things that are happening with the schedule, you know, it, it's, um, you know, it definitely has, has shook things up to be able to, um, have those short tracks come into play. And, and as you guys know, on those short tracks, you know, there's a lot of beating and banging and, and situations that, that could, uh, definitely affect what we do but that could be any race and, and I think as you look at you know the, the the first round it's obviously very intriguing from you know especially when you go to Richmond uh, you know, racetrack that we haven't been there uh, this year and you kind of have to take a guess at, at uh, what you need to do it's a high wear racetrack you know from a tire standpoint so getting your cambers and things right is is going to be um, you know a little bit tricky so yeah, you know, I think as as you look at the playoffs in general, though, they're you know they're the way that they're set up. Uh, you know, it's intriguing as you go through every round, just because of the fact that you have different racetracks from the year before, uh, but they're also you know racetracks that that can be um, you know detrimental to uh, you know, finishes and and gaining points because of of the style of race or uh, the situation that it could create. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Dustin Albino. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Yeah, Kevin, kind of off that, uh, the second stage of the playoffs, the second round has both the Roval and Talladega. So how unpredictable could that be? Uh, it's just like I just said, you know, they're, they're all uh, can be unpredictable and, and they all have their, have their own um, unique situations that, that could be uh, detrimental to uh, the things that you're trying to accomplish. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty easy to read in. All you gotta, all you gotta do is look at the schedule and, and understand uh, the type of race that they are. And, and you're right. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Koki Riley. Go ahead with your question, Koki. Hey, Kevin. Um, so, what was your reaction when you heard the news that the, the Cup Series Championship would be held in Phoenix? Yeah, you know, I think um, you know, for for me, the first reaction was, man, we didn't run very good there last year. Uh, second reaction was, um, you know, we've had a lot of success there in the past. And, and when we got done with the first race, realized that we were back on track and, and you know, capable of, of being able to win races and, and uh, be competitive there this year. So, you know, obviously Phoenix for me is, is uh, you know, kind of like a second home racetrack just because of uh, all the races that I've been able to run there and participate in and have a lot of fans that have watched me race there since the mid 90s. and and you know, it's a place that I've gone uh, to watch races for a long time. So uh, looking forward to, uh, to being able to uh, see how it all plays out. And, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can have some success there like we have in the past. Next question will come from Steve Schweitzer. Go ahead with your question, Steve. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Kevin, uh, the series has seen a lot of changes this year with uh, obviously no uh, qualifying, no practice, um, doubleheader weekends. How many of those things uh, do you see being incorporated uh, um, into the non-COVID uh, world going forward? Well, you know, I think that the most important thing to me is, is that we have a healthy sport. And, you know, I think a lot of that is going to be left up to, to NASCAR and the teams just because of the fact, uh, you know, we, we, we have to come out of this pandemic and, and situation in learning something. And, you know, I think efficiency – and, you know, what that brings from a financial standpoint, you know, is, is definitely something that I think everybody is, is calculating into the equations. But we also need healthy racetracks and we have to have, you know, opportunities for the fans to come to the racetrack as, as we move forward. So there's a lot of information that, that is coming out of the season that we are in. And, you know, in the end, you know, the most important thing is how do we get the race teams through this with the way that we have to work? 
in, in the race shop, obviously, you know, with North Carolina and, and the, and the rules and things that, that we have here and, and having most of the race shops here, you have to be able to work within those guidelines. So, you know, I think as we go from, from racetrack to racetrack, we, we've learned that, you know, if, if, if things aren't going to work out in a certain location, we can go to a different location and everybody's been very open to that and, and uh, navigated that very well. So uh, there's a number of things that uh, I think everybody has been wanting to try in the past with double headers, midweek races, one day shows. And, you know, I think that we've all learned that practice and qualifying are really not that important to uh, what the outcome and what the race looks like on, on Sundays or Saturdays or whenever that race is. So, uh, there's there's definitely some things that that have to be considered going forward, um, because in the end, I, I don't I don't believe we're in a much different position of where we can race and how we can race and who can be there and who can't be there when we start next year. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Alex Andreev. Go ahead with your question, Alex. Hey, Kevin. Um, you you mentioned sort of the difficult season that Kyle Busch has been having, but then also kind of the need to have consistency and momentum going into playoffs. So I, I'm wondering how difficult it is to kind of have a season like he's had and then be able to turn it around for playoffs. I mean, does it feel like that window's closing almost? Uh, I, I, I don't know, you know, what their thought process is or how they approach things or, you know, what the demeanor of the team is. There's just so many things that, that you know, would have to go into that equation. I can only relate to uh, the things that, that, you know, I know how we would approach it as a team and, and, the, and the open mind uh, that, that we would all have and, and kind of, you know, creating that, that reset button, you know, that we talked about earlier of us not wanting to have. Sometimes you have to, you know, reset the rules uh, for yourself if, if you've had a bad year. Um, but, you know, you have to be in it to win it. And, you know, I think as, as you're in the playoffs and, and doing the things that, that everybody else is doing with a, you know, with a fresh set of, of point standings and, and the elimination uh, that, that comes along with uh, every three weeks, you know, there's still opportunity there. So, you know, a lot of that's going to come down to, you know, how their cars perform and how much better they're going to be, you know, with the playoff cars compared to the regular season cars and, and, you know, and, and really how it's approached from a, from a mental standpoint and, and, and uh, you know, how much they can, they can leave everything behind them. So it's hard to tell in, in somebody else's situation, but I, I know for us, uh, we would, we would definitely uh, be letting it all go and, and trying to hit the reset button to get started on a, on a fresh season that, that could make your whole year. So uh, he, here's the, here's the bottom line with Kyle. I mean, he broke his leg, came back, missed, nine, 10, 11 races, whatever it was, and won a championship. So it's not like they haven't been in, in some sort of situation like this before. Our next question will come from Scott Chancy. Go ahead with your question, Scott. Kevin, considering this Southern 500 is at night and the race you won in May is during the day, is this a totally different Darlington this weekend that you're going to experience compared to May? Um, I guess we'll just take May and combine them because we ran one in the day and one at night. So. Um, it shouldn't it shouldn't be that much different, um, other than the fact that we're going to start the race with, with um, you know a couple of other divisions already having having been on the racetrack. So we, we've been on both sides of of, uh, of daytime and nighttime, um, you know from the from the two races at the beginning of the year. Our next question is going to come from Davy Segal. Go ahead with the question, Davy. Hey Kevin, have you and Denny conversed with each other at all about the weekly battles you guys continue to have and reflect on that at all, or has it been more so just focusing on yourselves and your respective race teams throughout this season? Yeah, it's just you know really been focusing on on our own race teams, and and you know I think everybody's everybody's aware of of where everybody is and and who's doing good and who's doing bad. So yeah, it's definitely not not something that we're that we, that we've been calling each other up and saying, hey, what do you think? Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's the, it's the distance, um, understanding of, of what each other's doing and, and who's, who's doing what, and, and just trying to do the best you can for your team. Thank you. Good luck. Our next question is going to come from Eric Smith. Go ahead with the question, Eric. Yeah, thank you. Um, Kevin, I'm just curious, you, you hear stick and ball sports, their athletes say that the rise of the top is one thing, but remaining on top is another um, we've only had three drivers win this championship multiple times since 1999. I know you've been close multiple times. Do you feel like the fight to stay on top in NASCAR now is as hard as it's ever been? 
uh, it's different. You know, I, you know, winning a championship today isn't how Earnhardt and Petty did it. You know, I think it's, um, you know, it's a much different style of, of winning a championship than, than, than what it used to be. So, you know, I think when, when you look at the point standings from, from this year, you know, you, you see why, um, you know, the playoffs were, were put into effect and in, in trying to make sure that we had an intriguing uh, 10 weeks of, of racing as, as we went towards the end of the year. So, you know, I think as, as you look at that, it's, um, you know, it's very difficult in, uh, to, to get yourself to the, to the last race of the season and be one of those four cars and trying to be able to uh, race for and, and let alone win a championship. So it's, it's very difficult to, to put yourself in that position. And once you get there, be able to put everything together against the other three guys on one particular day, especially when it's, you know, it's been at the same racetrack, you know, every, every season that we, that we've gone about it this way. So, you know, I think moving those racetracks and, and changing the, the venues and uh, keeping it mixed up has made it very intriguing for the fans and very difficult from a competitor standpoint uh, with navigating, you know, the last 10 weeks of the season and, and having it all work out is just, is just very difficult. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Our next question will come from Stephen Taranto. Go ahead with the question, Stephen. Kevin, I wanted to ask you this question, given the, the Southern 500 this weekend. Uh, moving forward, as we discuss the 2021 schedule, there's been a lot of talk of uh, shortening races and maybe making 500-mile races more uh, selective. Right now, I believe there are about 10 races. that are either 500 miles or 500 laps. Do you think that that number should be smaller and that 500-mile races should be uh, special and more, uh, I don't want to say more prestigious, but uh, <clears throat> do, do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, there's no reason that, that any of any race outside of a crown jewel race is, is longer than 500 miles. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that, you know, is, is really even necessary in, in today's day and age. I mean, the, the, the race that, you know, I'll use Texas, for example, 500 miles at Texas, it takes forever. Um, you know, to, to run that race and, and do the things that we do there. Um, and we've all learned and the fans and, and sponsors even look at it and they're like, man, this is, you know, it just seems more intense when the races are a little shorter. But when you look at the Daytona 500 and you look at the Coke 600 and um, the Southern 500, uh, th those races, you know, obviously have a different type of, of, of meaning to our sport than, you know, some of the other races that have been added through the years. And, and I think that the, the distance of 500 miles at, at a lot of these races is, is definitely too long. That's good. Our, Thank you, Kevin. Our final question for Kevin will come from Gabe McDonald. Go ahead with the question, Gabe. Hey, Kevin. Sorry if this has been asked before, but how would you say that Darlington really fits your racing style and what so special? Well, you know, I think the, the thing, uh, Darlington so special is it, it just has such deep roots in our sport and you know winning winning the Southern 500 is is something that all the drivers want to do and all the teams want to do and, and they understand the significance and the history that that comes with with winning that race so you know I think for for me it's it's very you know obviously been a, a very good racetrack for us since we've since we've come to um, together at Stuart Haas Racing and and you know, it's a racetrack that has, you know, some very unique corners and tire fall off and a lot of, a lot of uh, things happen there that, that don't happen at other racetracks. So you have to adapt and adjust as you go throughout the run and, and throughout the day and night. And so there's a lot of things to, um, you know, to wrap your arms around. So it's a, it's a challenging racetrack. And, and I think that's, that's one reason that it spits so well. Uh, for us at, at uh, Stuart Haas Racing and, and the things that we've done on the four car over the past seven years. Good deal. Well, Kevin, thanks for taking the time to join us this morning and good luck in the playoffs. All right, guys. Thank you.